Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Well, there's a new category of games, environmentally responsible miniature games. This is Novus Malum by Enviro Games. The starter set is 13 gnomes versus 13 dwarves. Gnomes is spelled with a K, and they're from Gnarlwood, also spelled with a K. The dwarves are from Anvil Keep, because of course they are. Alright, so the publishers are trying to make a good game while also minimizing their environmental footprint. I think it's a cool idea, so I bought a copy to check it out. Let's take a look. Here's the padded envelope that the kit came in. It's recyclable, and it's not too big. I tore it a bit, and the padding is made from paper, not plastic. The game box made it safe and sound. No plastic wrap, just a simple box with a sticker for a bit of flavor. Inside are a bunch of paper envelopes with minis, bases, and tokens. There are six data cards for the different units and heroes. Finally, we've got a small but professional looking rulebook here. Let's dig into the envelopes. One of the envelopes has game tokens. These are all laser cut MDF instead of plastic. The game uses dice, but dice are not included because everybody already has dice. And now for the good stuff, the minis. The bases are MDF, and the minis themselves are CO cast. The bits were all clipped off of the sprues so that the sprue could be melted down and cast into more minis. Each envelope has two minis. The two bodies are duplicates, but some of them have different arms and heads. Most of the minis were broken down into five or six different pieces. Seocast has pros and cons just like any other material. It's a type of injection molding plastic that's accessible to small companies. It's easy to recycle and reuse the sprues. It's durable, and it can give some very nice detail. On the other hand, we need to use super glue to stick the models together, and the mold lines are annoying to clean. Seocast plastic comes in a couple of different variants, and these models are a mix between Seorez hard and Seorez soft. I'd never worked with this blend before, but I found that the mold lines could be sliced off or sanded off, but they couldn't be scraped off. So this plastic is a bit tricky to work with, but it is doable. A few of the weapons came bent, but I found that I could just bend them back, and they actually stayed how I wanted them. Oh, and the shape of the dwarven shields looks a bit funky, but that's because they're supposed to interlock into a shield wall, and I think that's pretty neat. Let's paint those dwarves. We've got a leader, six dwarves with hammers, and six dwarves with crossbows. I've got them glued to some temporary bases. I use a single drop of super glue under the left foot so that it'll be easy to pop them off later. I've got some bases with magnets underneath that I keep reusing for this purpose. We'll paint the dwarves and their final bases separately, and we'll stick them together at the end. I used my airbrush to get started. Depending on how many models you paint, I think an airbrush is more environmentally friendly than cans of spray paint. It takes materials and energy to manufacture the compressor and the airbrush, but I've gotten tons of use out of them, and I've probably consumed dozens of fewer spray cans than I would have otherwise. I put down some black primer, and then I sprayed the minis with a dark steel metallic. I'm using a plastic disposable glove, and I normally get multiple sessions out of each of these before they fall apart. I did a quick zenithal of bright silver over the dark steel, and then I was ready to take the minis back to the painting desk. I'm going to keep the chain mail and the plate mail metallic, and I'm going to find some good colors for everything else. So, environmental responsibility. This is a topic that I care about, and it's why I'm making this video. I want to start by saying that, in the scheme of things, I'm not too worried about our hobby. We all live in the modern world, so we consume from the moment we're born to the moment we die. The time that we spend painting miniatures is time that we're not driving around in an SUV to go shopping for another set of new curtains or, or whatever it is that normal people do. We paint small things with small amounts of paint. When we're done with a set of minis, we're more likely to find a new home for them than we are to throw them away. This can be a healthy and relatively low impact hobby. All that being said, we should be aware of our consumption. There's a lot of room for improvement in the way that things have been done in this industry. It's cool to see that Enviro Games are working on this issue. Now when I ordered Novus Malum, one of the guys at Enviro Games recognized my human name, and they reached out to say hi. I had a video call with Dan and Jack, and my conclusion was that they fully believe in their mission, and they actually have the skill sets to be leaders on this. On their website, they have the motto of People, Planet, Profit. 
Their goal is to make games that people actually want and grow a company that's environmentally responsible and economically sustainable. They're all based in the UK and it seems like they're doing their best to get all the components manufactured locally to them. Of course they needed to ship the game across the Atlantic to get it to me, but it was a small package and they used just enough packaging to keep it safe. We talked about each item in the starter box and I got the sense that they have an iterative mindset. That is, they're constantly looking at other options for each component, and if something better comes along, they'll take it. They were thinking about everything, down to the type of ink that's used for the stickers on the front of the box. The attention to details is good to see. This project has me thinking about everything that I use at my painting desk. I used a natural hair brush for base coating, and I swapped in a synthetic brush for the wash. I put black enamel wash all over these dwarves. It's fun to use oil washes sometimes, and I think it works especially well on their chainmail. Animal hair brushes certainly have a cost, but they also last a long time, and each natural hair brush can replace a handful of synthetic brushes. Using fewer brush handles means chopping down fewer trees, so there are trade-offs to everything. I'm going to continue to use a variety of tools, but I do want to be aware of what I'm using and be somewhat responsible. After the wash dries a bit, I'm going to use some mineral spirits and a couple of disposable cotton swabs to clean the oil wash off of the high points. This will give the mini some nice contrast. There's always going to be some consumption in our hobby, but in the scheme of things, the quantities are pretty small. I'm glad that Enviro Games is thinking of ways to shrink that footprint even more. I didn't use too much of the mineral spirits, and I'll be able to reuse the little plastic cup. Now, let's make the bases. Ordinarily, I use plastic bases, but let's see what we can do with these MDF bases. I put down a layer of texture paste, and I added some rocks and pebbles on top. I'm doing this as one big batch. All the bases for gnomes, and all the bases for dwarves, all at once. I got the painting started with my airbrush. I want to get a good variety of browns and greens on the bases, with some natural looking transitions between them. In practice, that just means that I'm going to randomly squirt greens and browns all over the bases. Once I was done with the airbrush, I got out a regular paintbrush to paint the stones gray. I think the deliberate edges on the stones make the random patterns of the rest of the colors look even more organic. Next, I used a makeup brush to do a light gray dry brush to highlight everything. Obviously, this works well on the gray rocks, but it also looks good on the greens and browns. I think these bases look great like this, but I decided to darken them with washes so that they wouldn't pull attention away from the dwarves. I was worried about this because I chose green as the major accent color on those dwarves. In the meantime, I gave the dwarves two thin coats of varnish. I used a mix of satin and matte through the airbrush. I snapped the dwarves off of their temporary bases, and I used super glue to attach them to their forever bases. Alright, we've got some dwarves, and now we need to paint some gnomes. I glued the minis together and reused the same temporary bases from the dwarves. We have six gnome skirmishers with javelins, six gnome hunters with bows, and their leader, Alto Mage Zizka. I got them all primed with terracotta. I want to use a lot of warm colors on these minis, and I really like terracotta as a base coat. This time, I started by painting the bases dark green to give some better context as I was trying to figure out the rest of the paint scheme. This helps me to visualize what the minis will look like once they're on their final bases. In some of the studio paint jobs, the gnomes have blue skin. I considered blue skin, but I decided to go with some human skin tones instead. I ended up using four different skin colors from the Two Thin Coats line of paint. I wanted to give them something wild, so they're getting dark jade hair from Pro Acryl. These are small minis, but they have a ton of detail, and I especially love their faces and their hair. They've got mohawks and mutton chops and goatees and a whole lot of style. Alright, so the lore of this game is that there was a big war 3,000 years ago, and that war ended with the creation of the Great Shroud, which is a big misty boundary. That boundary is starting to weaken, and the gnomes who have been surviving in the Fallen Kingdom are now coming into contact with the dwarves of Anvil Keep. The dwarves always knew that this day might come. So yeah, the Great Shroud is coming down, and there's a new evil in the land. Novus Malum. New evil. This sounds like a lot of other fantasy settings, but there's just enough of a twist. 
These gnomes have spent generations living on a ruined continent, and they have a hard edge to them. These aren't the happy, funny gnomes that we're used to, but they're still clever and curious. The gnomes of Gnarlwood are a nice contrast to the dwarves of Anvil Keep. The dwarves are pretty much exactly what you think they are. The dwarves of Anvil Keep. Hammers and armor and crossbows. Classic fantasy dwarves. The dwarves have some good models, but the gnomes really have some good models. I'm feeling my way through this color scheme, and I'm happy with where it's going. Burnt orange, dull red, ochre yellow, burnt sienna, and a good mix of other browns. After I was happy with the base coat, I gave the gnomes a satin varnish with my airbrush. Then, I used a dark enamel wash. This wash felt risky because I really liked how the base coat was going, but I think it'll pay off. The nice thing about oil washes is we can wipe off anything that we don't like. This is a slightly lighter color wash than the black that I used on the dwarves, but it's still quite dark. I let the enamel wash dry overnight, and then I came back with mineral spirits. This time, instead of q-tips, I used a bit of paper towel. This is the heavy duty kind sold for workshops. I folded this into a triangle with some decently stiff edges. I held it with a pair of tweezers, dunked it in mineral spirits, and cleaned the parts of the models that I thought were too dark and dirty. This gave better control than the cotton swabs, and also left less lint behind. Also, the tweezers are a reusable handle. Reduce, reuse, recycle. When the minis were dry again, I gave them a coat of matte varnish to seal in everything that we've done so far. Then, I painted on some details. The important bits are some jade highlights on their hair, some grey highlights on their stone weapons, and of course I tried to paint their itty bitty eyes. I brightened up their terracotta clothes and their red bandanas a bit, and I was ready to call them done. Here they are on their proper bases. Not bad. Not bad at all. So here's all the good stuff from the Novus Malum First Encounters starter box. 26 minis, 21 MDF tokens, 6 data cards, and a rulebook. The waste from this starter set is 14 little paper envelopes, a small cardboard box, and the shipping envelope. All of this stuff is recyclable. There were also some plastic crumbs on my desk that I wiped up and threw away. There were no extra plastic bits, so there weren't really any options for how I built these minis, but that also minimizes the plastic waste. For future releases, I probably would like to see a few options for heads and arms. Overall, I'm quite happy with my gnomes, and I feel okay about the dwarves. The seal cast material was a bit tricky to clean up, and there are still some visible mold lines on my painted dwarves. I realized too late that this plastic actually can be sanded, so if you get these dwarves, I'd recommend using a sanding stick on their shoulder pads. Once you get past the mold lines, the models have outstanding detail. The chainmail on the dwarves actually looks like interlocking rings. On the gnomes, the faces and the hair are great. The stitching on their clothes is another example of the high resolution on the details. The rulebook is small, but it looks like a well-designed little skirmish game. It's a full-color book, it's got some lore in there, and it's got some game scenarios. The book doesn't waste any space, and there's no mention in the printed materials about the environment or recycling or any of that stuff. The company Enviro Games is environmentally responsible, but the game itself isn't preachy. It's a skirmish game with gnomes and dwarves, and later on there might be some more races. I haven't played yet, so I don't know if it's fun, but it looks like it might be. The models are cool, and that's all I really care about. Maybe someday someone will challenge me to a game. I call gnomes. I try not to stress too much about the environmental impact of mini painting. When I get stressed, I use energy and water to take a shower, and then I use gasoline to drive my car to the mall. I go to the food court and I use plastic utensils to eat orange chicken at Panda Express. Actually, I normally use wooden chopsticks, but they give me a plastic fork anyway. Everything we do in the modern world has a footprint, and in the scheme of things, painting minis isn't too bad. Painting minis is time that I'm not stress eating at Panda Express, or driving around on a jet ski, or, or whatever else it is that normal people do. At the same time, I am so, so happy that Enviro Games is doing what they're doing. I think it's awesome that they're finding ways to reduce the impact of our hobby. 
They're one of the leaders on this, and I'm hopeful that other hobby companies in our niche will notice. Enough small changes really can add up. I have another video planned about other people in our hobby who also have a focus on reduce, reuse, recycle. Stay tuned and let me know if you have any recommendations for that topic. I'll leave you with one final idea for environmental responsibility. Try to paint a similar number of minis to the number of minis that you buy. This is very difficult, but it is theoretically possible. I painted all 26 minis in this box. I feel proud, and I feel responsible, and I feel like I deserve to buy myself some more minis. I've heard rumors that new units and new factions are planned for Novus Malum. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Alrighty, that's it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.